with us, uh, but she'll be here tomorrow. Okay, so, and yeah. Connor, are, you are not Connor? I am Cody. You're Cody, yeah. oh, and you're Connor. That's Connor. Connor. So yeah. how do you guys know each other? <laughs> That's your question, always. Well, well from the start. I met him about eight years ago when I was in middle school, and he's just kind of like an older brother, and I signed a best friend. He's just getting like close to him. Yeah, yeah, get close to him. Thank So I'm going to give you to the reporters for a minute, okay. but I have a proclamation from you, which you'll get at the end from the city of Santa Monica. Thank but you. we're so happy thank you're you here. So much. Thank you. Thank for you so much. No, thank, thank you for doing what you do. It's such an important thing. Thank you. So yeah. reporters. Hello. Welcome. I was like meeting you for the first time. I know, I right? It's crazy. <laughs> oh. All right. So how's this work? How do you feel? Oh, how do I feel? Um, <laughs> Very thankful. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm blessed that God has put me in this position and that I was able to actually make it across to this pier. Uh, there were many times from the beginning of this that uh, we could have quit, we could have stopped, uh, that we were very tempted to do so. I think as I was approaching it, the, the boardwalk, we said, uh, Texas, I don't think we'll be stepping foot in a little bit. We got, we need a break from Texas. Uh, we got in that that state, felt like we couldn't get back out of it, but. Uh, it's a long state. Um, we made it though. We made it. Uh, I didn't think that I would ever be able to do this. After beating cancer, I was told that I'd never walk normally again in my life. Uh, and just like many, many other children sitting in the hospital, families that aren't aren't being able to uh, unfortunately be with their child uh, because of COVID regulations right now, they're being told similar things and their dreams are being crushed. Uh, and, and that's just not fair. They didn't choose to fight this illness. And, you know, it, it takes, it's, it's upon us as people to come back together as a community, 
to support these individuals and really help them live their lives to their fullest potential. So, um, and that is uh, high. And, uh, you know, and that's that's really what this all stood for. It stood for hope, to reinstill those dreams of humanity. And, um, and we, we did it. So. Nice to meet you in person. Nice to meet you. Hello, Nikki. Hello. 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 Um, yeah, my uh, yeah, the feeling is, is insane because I think my knees are buckling a little bit from the, uh, from the rush right now. But uh, yeah, it's we made it. Yeah, we made it. So you want the batch? No, I'm not pulling. Not pulling a full Forrest Gump here. Okay, we got shaved up for this interview. Uh, you know, I think by the time I would get back, well, no, I don't know if I would make it back. Um, I am a hobbit, so that was, that's cool. We've uh, got that distinguished mark. And I like that a little bit better being a Lord of the Rings fan, you know. Cody, they told, they told you you'd never do something. Yeah. T tell us about that and uh, how you proved them wrong. Yeah, so when the doctors took my bone out of my leg, um, they woke me up after anesthesia and said I'd never play sports again. I'd never run and I'd never walk normally again in my life. I'd be in a large plastic brace, metal hinges I had to keep oiled the rest of my life. I'm supposed to just hobble around, uh, struggle to get in a sense, in and out of the grocery store, much less walk across the country. Uh, this was, wasn't the dream. The dream was to just throw the brace in the corner and be normal as a normal kid again. I was a year round athlete, had all my dreams stripped of me. So I just wanted to get some normalcy. Uh, and as I've leaned on faith and leaned on those around me uh, to really put one foot in front of the other, uh, slowly came into vision about five to six years ago that, you know, I needed to walk across the country uh, because I believe that the strength is there and, and I'm a stubborn guy, so. <laughs> what was amongst the biggest challenges for you the past 10 months? Honestly, just being away from your love and support system, right? Uh, that's got to be one of the hardest things when you're in the middle of Texas, uh, sorry, Texas, uh, the deserts, anything like that. Uh, sleeping out of a car consistently day after day after day the mental tear wear and tear that it has on your body it's it's a bear and I don't really think that uh, you fully comprehend that until you really, until you put yourself in that situation uh, and not having anybody to uh, I mean I have my, my teammate Connor to lean on uh, he was as much of a part of this as I was I couldn't have done it without him uh, I'm incredibly thankful for his dedication to just keeping me on my feet <laughs> giving me water forcing me to sit down and and not push too far at one time uh you know but that mental wear and tear would have been insane without him so uh but missing family that's got to be the hardest part you also mentioned the last 70 days was really hard can you talk about that yeah so the last 70 days we encountered our first desert uh and that was from Day 70 on, pretty much. Um, we didn't see greenery again uh, until we hit uh, well, the LA region. So uh, it was a long, long haul. Uh, we had mountainous terrain. We really weren't expecting all that in the desert. Uh, but we've learned that the country is very hilly. Uh, so when you're stuck in dust storms and rainstorms and don't have a shower, that has a different taste at the end of the day. And, uh, so the struggle of just not being clean and um, just hurting all over. You can't recover in a car. My body aches literally as we're standing here, lower back, my hips. Uh, I'm hoping that they didn't separate again, but they sure feel like they did. So, uh, but we pushed on and prevailed. You said that you stayed in your car for a lot of the last 70 days for specific breathing. Can you tell me why you did that? So uh, we stayed in the car for a majority of the last 70 days in order to conserve budget. Uh, you know, we, we have a goal and, and a cause, and that's to improve the cancer battle for people in general, but every child that's fighting. Uh, Champions Do Overcome that I started is setting out to 
give those that don't have a support system a support system for the battle. Send parents on date night so we can fight that divorce ratio that is really relevant or prevalent in, uh, in the battles today, as well as pay all cost of living bills for these families during the duration of the battle. It's something that's needed coast to coast. We have to change the outcomes of these families and it's going to take the village. How much money did you raise in the end? We raised just over $100,000 so far. Uh, I don't like to consider that it's over yet. I think that uh, with all this publicity and everything, I think that it's just beginning. Uh, so I'm really excited to see what the next week has and really what the next year, the rest of the year holds. Connor, come here. Hey. Come here, Connor. Were you there the whole time with him? Since day one and the time of prayer. Yeah. So come a little closer if you can. Um, what is it? You can stay. Any, stand with him. Stand with him. The team, but we don't like to be that close. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you just you were a little terrible the last five months. Why, why do this for your friend with your friend? Um, well, he really, like, he really wouldn't have been able to just throw on a backpack and start without anyone. Um, and for being such a, for it being for such a great cause, um, I something that I dream of helping him grow over time as well. So, um, Connor Rose. C-O-N-N-O-R? And that's how you spell O'Connor too, O-R, right? Yes. Um, and I assume you kind of like the guy since you would yeah, do something. You, know, right. you, you must, you must <laughs> be pretty close for you to be willing to do What does he mean to you? What does this friendship mean to you? Um, well, he's, he's like a mentor to me. Um, um, older brother. Um, just one of my best friends now because we have gotten so close and we've been together for so long. Um, we bicker at each other a lot, but that's just kind of for fun now um, because we wouldn't know what to say if we didn't bicker at each other. But uh, <laughs> yeah. And so, any final words, your messages to what is your biggest takeaway from all this? Um, I guess just you know. We've seen across the country every every community that really needs help, and uh, now that we have seen that, we can go back home and readjust to what we want to do and how we want to continue helping people. And how do you? Uh, you know, this is the end of chapter one, right? Chapter one was to walk across America. Uh, the rest of the story is to go down the list of things doctors said I would never do again. Uh, it's, it's, it's time for hope in this country. It's time that we come back together and uh, we're ready to be a driving force, leading that motivation, leading that positivity, and kind of redefining what that image looks like, redefining the cancer battle, and helping kids live out their dreams. Can you just summarize how many miles, how many days, for what cause? Yeah, uh, so it was uh, 3,826 miles, uh, 246 days, and uh, for Champions to Overcome, uh, striving to alleviate uh, pediatric cancer patients' uh, cost of living, uh, help the support system, and send parents on the Hell yeah. And I have Addison here. just a little bit more homey and, and everything that's, you know, because it is a, 
the, the room itself is depressing and dark and all of that, and she can talk more about that. Uh, but she, she's doing that, um, making an impact herself. Her courage and who she is as an individual really shined the first time I met her because she is, she doesn't look at it as, you know, her battle. She looks at it as, what can she do to help others? And, uh, Are you guys local? East Sorry. Do you mind if I ask you a question on Jeff? No, no, you don't mind? No, I don't want to. Okay. <laughs> um, are you guys parents? Yes. Can we answer you? Of course. Sure. Sure. Okay. Um, just, so do you walk with people last mile? Do you have a comment? Like last day? It was a day, so it was about one. Awesome. Um, so first, what are, do you want me to hold the mic? Oh, sure. Yeah, Teamwork. I'm suggesting it. Could you all hear me? Sorry. Um, I'll just wait for her to turn it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, good? Okay. So, first, you're going to how to spell it. First, Conley, C O N, E L Y. And Stacy Barry Conley. Okay. How do I spell that? Stacy is S T A C I. Barry Conley. Oh, wow. And this is Addie, your daughter. How old is she? 17. So, what did it mean to you to see the movie Bobby the day? Uh, it's amazing. Anything we can do. Yeah. Rudy Flores. Nice to meet you. What's up, man? How are you doing? Good. Good. How are you? Yeah, for sure. As you can see, you obviously made a tremendous impact of all of us here. I mean, you have representatives, you know, city council here, representatives, family members from both the police and fire departments. Really, your, your, your cause, your story, um, your journey really touched us all. It was a huge impact and it was important that we were all here to meet and meet you and congratulate you. So congratulations on having us uh, so much this morning. Thank you so much. And we have a little we have a little bit of swag for you right here. Awesome. From, uh, love swag. From the Police Officers Association, awesome. from the Chief of Police, and also from the uh, the Mounted Patrol. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Could we do that in front of the fire truck, please? Oh, okay. Awesome. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so, Cody, we in the city of Santa Monica are so happy to see you here. I said it before, I'll say it again. It's awesome. And uh, we have this commendation to present to you. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> But I'm going to read this, okay? Whereas Cody Connor, now 25 years old and a cancer survivor, has been walking across the country from his home in Cincinnati, Ohio, on a walk for hope for the past nine months to raise $300,000 for pediatric cancer. And whereas Cody O'Connor kicked off the walk for hope in New York on June 17th, 2021, really amazing. And has walked approximately 38, <laughs> tell me again, 38. It says approximately 3,500, but I want for the record, 38. <laughs> you don't have to walk. The approximately 3,700 mile journey, averaging around 20 to 25 miles per day. And whereas Cody O'Connor has completed his last steps at the Santa Monica Pier. <laughs> Together, please. Yeah, I got you. All right. Everyone in the water. Okay. Did you get one? 
Taking steals or video? Video. Video. Anybody taking steal? Yeah. 